Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us. I'm Andy Schweiger up here at Schweiger Vineyards, and I'm joined today by Sarah and Justin of Striking Matches. Yeah. Hey, guys. Hi. How you doing? Thank you for joining us today. This is going to be a lot of fun, I think. Yeah, yes. Thank you for having us. It's good to be, to be here. here. Yeah. yeah, it's good to be here at home. Here at home. <laughs> Nashville, right? Yeah. yeah. Yep. That's right. Yeah. 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 And you guys actually, one of your songs right now is on, is it Grey's Anatomy? Am I right? Oh, yeah. So that was, yeah. um, that was this past season's season premiere. Uh -huh. We had one. Yeah. Um, we've been really lucky with our career just to have quite a few songs that made it on film or TV. Mm -hmm. And um, so I think Grey's Anatomy was the first one that really, I think maybe my mom wasn't sure I was actually doing anything. And it was like, <laughs> that was the one It was like, oh, yeah, totally. And I know that. And so, like, way to go. <laughs> cool. Well, hey, you know, I uh, heard, I saw a video earlier. You guys were talking about how you guys met and became a duo before you guys play something for us. Can you uh, tell that story for our viewers? Sure, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, well, my name is Sarah, by the way. Yeah. I'm from outside of Philadelphia. This is Justin, who's from outside of Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And uh, we both moved to Nashville to, to be guitar players. And so, uh, you know, when you graduate high school and you got to go to college, coolest thing you could probably do is go to college to play guitar so that's what we did. and uh first couple of weeks of school they the class that we were in the guitar class we were in made all the the freshmen pair up with somebody else and get up in front of the rest of the class which is about 100 kids well it was like and, a it was like a first day hazing yeah um, so that you just had to pair up with somebody you'd never right. met get up and just completely make up something on the spot yeah and with a stranger so yeah they happened to pick me and then they picked sarah mm -hmm. and i was curious because I just had no idea what to play but I was just kind of like well do you want to play some blues or something do you know any blues and that was when she whipped out her slide and just kind of left everybody's jaw on the floor <laughs> including mine I was just like that was the coolest thing I think I've ever seen and so um, <laughs> we, I was just like, we should do that again sometime yeah so we just kind of kept jamming for a few years and then after a couple of years of that we were like oh this is like a thing and we started yeah. writing songs together and realized that you know what we did was actually something we wanted to do so um became striking matches <laughs> awesome yeah well you guys want to play something for us sure yeah 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 we just um we just released a new ep uh mm -hmm. called night and we'll play you a tune off of night yeah. it's called without you Stumbling home, can't call the cab. I broke my phone, and even though we never smoke, they smell like cigarettes. I wish I may, I wish I might wake up with you and hold you tight. And if we never said goodbye, I never would have dreamed. Even when it was just a whisper, we were always in love. We were always in love. If we fall, we fall together. And I know because my heart was still know how to be. The same movie scenes will get to me. I'd probably stay in Tennessee. But I don't want to do it without you. I could have nothing left to lose. I could have every dream come true. But right now, the truth is. I don't want to do it without you. You turn the bed into sweet. You make my favorite memories. It all makes perfect sense to me when I say it in my head. And if there's a thing is afterlife, I will come. 
come back a thousand times so I can look into your eyes and tell you it's all right. My heart would still know how to be the same as the scenes would get to me. I'd probably stay in Tennessee, but I don't want to do it without you. I could have nothing left to lose. I could have every dream come true. But right now the truth is, I don't want to do it without you. Awesome guys. <laughs> wow, Thank 
you so much. That was just so fun seeing you guys get into it and just soloing over it. I mean, that was. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was way out. Yeah. <laughs> I just bent it way too far. <laughs> 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 it's Thursday. I can't tell that. <laughs> What, and I have to ask, because that was amazing. There's so many influences in your music. How do you, can you classify what genre are you guys? You know, it's, it's um, we feel like it's kind of a mixture of a little rock, a little Americana, a little pop. Um, okay. Blues influences too. So, you know, me playing slide guitar and everything is a little bit of blues. So kind of more a blues rock yeah. kind of thing, but um we're just, we're just us. <laughs> yeah, you're just, it's, um, I have a friend who is a bass player with a band called Nickel Slots, and they describe themselves as alt-country, but they're more than just country, and yeah, that was, that was a lot of fun, not only to hear, but to see you guys playing that, and thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, well, you know, I failed to mention the top, for those of you watching at home, uh, so we're going to taste two wines together today our 2017 Chardonnay, and that's first up. Normally I tell people up this up front so they know what to grab from their cellar. So those of you watching at home, uh, we're gonna start okay? And then Sarah and Justin are gonna play another song for us. And then we'll get into our 2016 Cabernet Franc. Perfect. Let you guys catch your breath and have some water and then uh, let's have some Chardonnay. Okay. <laughs> However it works. Watch your guitar okay. there. I'll be really right, <laughs> okay. Got yeah, it. so I haven't had the privilege of hosting you guys up here before. Yeah, but no, so out, a little bit about us and a little bit about this wine. Uh, we're completely family owned and operated. So my dad bought this the property where we're at. We're at the very top of Spring Mountain Road at a two thousand foot elevation. Uh, back in 1960 and it was completely forested so he developed all the vineyards on his own he didn't hire somebody to come in and do it for him wow. uh, today my dad and I do all the farming side by side and we're all estate bottled so every single drop of wine that we sell we grew here in the property we made here in our own winery so no no outsourcing yeah um, and our Chardonnay is very unique because we're one of only three wineries doing 100% Spring Mountain District Chardonnay. So grown at this altitude in this region, it typically has a fun flinty minerality and a white peach. Mm. So I try not to get in the way with winemaking. So there's no malactic fermentation. So you won't get a lot of buttery. And I try to have a light touch with oak. So it's not going to be overly oaked. But love for you guys to give it a smell and taste and see what you think. Tiny bit of water in my bottom of my glass. <laughs> <Here we go. laughs> oh, you want me to do it? I mean, I think it, <laughs> just while you're at it, okay. go on. <laughs> All right, well, we've been really excited to try this. Um, some of the people that, some of our fans, they know that we're, we're in, definitely into wine. Yeah. Um, and we've been out to Napa a couple times. We, it's one of our favorite places out. in yeah. the world. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, once this is all lifted, I hope to get you guys up here and yeah, show you around the property a little bit. And... Mm. It's really nice. I don't know very much about Chardonnay at all. So. Oh, wow, that's really good. I don't know much about Chardonnay either, actually. But I like that. But I really like this. <laughs> it's very smooth. It just like goes down really easy. I think it's not. It's not like too oaky. I, I get a little bit of it, but it's not too oaky. Sometimes you get one and it's very oaky. But I would have the, probably. Sorry, well, no, I, I you finished. I thought you were. Oh, actually, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> wine. <laughs> okay, well, think of it. I just uh, it made me think when you were talking um, about. I, I do find that the, the Chardonnays that we have had out of Napa, they do tend to be pretty big and buttery. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so I was gonna ask about the, the malolactic fermentation 
So that was cool to hear you say it didn't have that because I feel like that's where a lot of that comes from. Mm -hmm. um, it's really nice. I can taste more of the grape that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, that's part of my philosophy is that, you know, we work so hard to grow the best fruit we can. Why get in the way of it? Let, let the fruit express itself. So yeah. the more we do in the cellar, the less it's going to taste like the vineyard. And yeah. ultimately my job is to give a presentation of terroir, give the wine a sense of place. Yeah. Mm, mm. It's delicious. It's also perfect for the weather we're having right now in Nashville. Yeah. Which is, it's, this is just so like refreshing and it, we've had a pretty hot day here in Nashville. <laughs> so I'm going to definitely have more of this and sit on the porch later. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoying the porch and play guitar for neighbors as they walk by. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they all play too. Yeah, so. I know. <laughs> Sent the lady over there. <laughs> well, that, that's fun. Have you guys been doing like porch concerts with each other then or? Um, I mean, we could, but it's sort of just been encouraged to stay away from each other. So yeah. <laughs> I feel oh. like that's more than like the vibe is nobody's come out. <laughs> right. Yeah. We try and go for a walk every day. Yeah. And, but if you see somebody coming, everybody's just kind of like, stay mm -hmm. away. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, we're trying to just, you know, stay at home. And <laughs> this is really lovely, man. That's very good. I really like that. I'm now I'm, I like to read the description after I try it. But yeah. Now I'm. <laughs> Yeah, the stone fruit, ripe apple, Meyer lemon. I love Meyer lemon. Your yeah, lemon? that is. My <laughs> That's really, really good. I am a big fan of that. That's delicious. Mm -hmm. Well, and if you've ever been to like a party where somebody's uh, shucking a lot of oysters, mm -hmm. uh, the minerality in this, it yeah. just reminds me of just you know, lo this wine loves fresh oysters. Yeah. But pairs so well with so many other foods. Uh, I think we're actually going to do a curry, a chicken curry tonight. So oh, very nice. amazing. That does sound. Um, I feel like that would be right up your alley. So I know. Um, also oysters. Yeah. Okay, what time are you guys coming over? <laughs> oh wait, we're <laughs> locked in. Yeah. We'll be there in, in tomorrow. <laughs> In that, a few months. You said, uh, my mom is watching and you said oysters and she texted me and she said, send me a case, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> you love oysters. <laughs> well, actually, Sarah, um, we, um, for your fans who've never had our wines, um, if they're interested in these, uh, we have on our website, it'll look, the coupon will expire tomorrow, but we're offering a $10 flat rate shipping anywhere in the continental United States for a purchase of six dollars, or sorry, six bottles or more for the $10 ground shipping. Oh, uh, so yeah, so it's a fun opportunity for people to go to schweigervineyards.com and peruse what we're having or order what you've enjoyed today and check out what you were enjoying. Definitely. Awesome, yeah. yeah. So they, there you go, Sarah's mom, $10 shipping. Sarah's mom, there you go. <laughs> He's got the answers. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's delicious. Pour me some more. Right. Oh, you, okay, you're so okay. nice. <laughs> so how long ago did you guys release that EP? That came out... It was about a month ago. Yeah, not long ago at all, yeah. actually. So we, uh, this, in the span of this whole last year, we released three EPs. Um, they're all a little bit different. Um, and that was kind of the idea was to sort of showcase all of the sort of different sides of ourselves. So each, they're called morning, noon, and night. And so the idea was three parts of a day, three parts of striking matches. So they're all a little bit different in kind of the types of songs and the production and what's kind of just happening around all of the songs. And so uh, Morning came out about a year ago. Yep. Uh, noon came out this past summer and then Night came out uh, just not too long ago. So mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and it was wow. kind of like really releasing a, a record's worth of music, but breaking it up because yeah. each one was kind of following a different theme. Um, yeah. So that was... That was kind of the fun part about making them EPs. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I feel like we we probably want to do a more long form project for yeah. the next thing. Because yeah. EPs, they feel like short stories and then um, records, like full length records, they feel like novels. Mm -hmm. uh, they're like a complete story. So. Yeah. Then you get to longer records like Genesis Three Sides, Three Sides Live, and that's more like a Stephen King novel. Yeah, exactly. I feel like that's 
that's like the, <laughs> the opus magnum or whatever. Right. The magnum <laughs> opus, like just the thing where you just, you can't stop your output. And so you just, you just, just let it yeah, all out. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, great. So do you guys want to uh, play another song for us? Yeah, you, you mentioned um, the Grey's Anatomy thing, and um, that was a song that we loved a lot enough that we just wanted to go ahead and we wanted to release it ourselves, um, and we put it out as a single. And uh, so we figured we'd, we'd play it for you because it's a really, really fun song to, to sing. Did you write that for Grey's Anatomy, or is it something you had on a previous single and they picked up, or how that worked out? It was it was almost like that. We we wrote it just as a song, and then Grey's Anatomy wanted to use it, and then we we decided that we liked the song and it was going to be on Grey's, so we wanted to put it out and sort of have it kind of come out simultaneously. Um, so it was it was almost a bit of both. I think we probably would have released it in some capacity anyway, but because uh, we just really dug the song. Yeah. But it was cool that the Grays thing kind of put like a date on it that we wanted to have it out by. Yeah, it kind of gave us sort of just the reason to mm -hmm. go ahead and put it out. But um, it's pretty like things like that when they happen are really cool because you know we write a lot of songs and we've had nearly 20 of our songs on TV or movies in some way and or commercials. And sometimes you're really connected to them. There are a few songs that were on the TV show Nashville uh, that were really special to us and we wanted to release them. But then sometimes you're kind of not as connected to them and they're just, they're songs that maybe someone else should sing or you kind of just get to tell a different story. And when they show up on a, on a commercial or, you know, in a show, it's really cool. So, yeah. yeah. All right, yeah. Right. Well, right. awesome. Yeah, just imagine this is um, like a really cool, like retro sounding bass or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. end, like a, um, cool, this is called Nah. Yeah, I'm gonna walk away. 
a lot of fun. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> How long have you guys been playing together now? Um, we... At least three weeks. At least three weeks. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now, now, now. We know that morning came out a year ago. Right, right. <laughs> um, it's probably been closer to like eight years now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's just I can see the visual communication that you don't necessarily need to verbalize and you know where you need to go. Yeah, there's a lot uh, of spoken words that happen. I think. Yeah. Well, hey, for everybody viewing at home, if you have any questions or comments, if you're on Zoom, feel free to type it into the comments. If you're on Facebook Live, type it in. Uh, we've got Paula reading them off. So if you have any, any questions or anything you want to say to Sarah and Justin, Feel free to uh, jump in. Yeah. <laughs> we hope you're all drinking wine. That's right. It's That's yes. Yeah. <laughs> so Justin, I got to ask you a question. Yeah, what part of Atlanta? Uh, so it's it's north of Atlanta by um, 30, 40 minutes. It's called uh, Forsyth County. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, I, kind of almost in the in the foothills of the like the North Georgia mountains. Um, sure. Yeah, I've driven through there before. My uh, uh, our son started Georgia Tech uh, two years ago. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, and it, it's one of those things that okay, when he was going to move all the way across the country, I wanted to make sure that uh, I had a reason to go visit him. So we kicked off a new distributor there two years ago, oh, cool. and they have blown up for us. They've become in one year they've become our top distributor. Wow. That's amazing. And we're now there, small little less, but only 5,000 cases. We're their number two wine brand. Wow. That's awesome. That's Congrats. awesome. Yeah. That's great. So odds, we've got a lot of wine club members in the greater Atlanta area throughout Georgia, actually. Yeah. And probably a few tuning in. So yeah. Uh, big shout out to all of our friends from Atlanta today. Yeah. I, my little hometown, I mean, it, it, had, I, when I grew up, it practically had nobody in it. Now there's, it was a really fast growing county, but there's one of the coolest little wine shops for like, it, it's way better than it has any right to be just in the the area of, of my little town. And it's called Talk of the Table. It's so good. It's, so good. it's like, they just, they carry the most cool, like, I feel like if they find it in a large store, if they find a wine in a, a bigger store, then they won't carry it because they want to be, they want to be carrying kind of unique bottles and they the the woman who owns it amy she's just so knowledgeable and yeah. so cool to talk to a really cool shop <laughs> amy at talk of the table i will make sure somebody calls on her yeah oh, i feel so like great. you guys would be perfect yeah totally they do they do tastings they used to do them like twice a yeah. week they became so popular that they do them every Almost single every day, day yeah. i think yep. i mean not now i guess probably yeah. what town is that in it's in cumming georgia so forsyth county okay yeah, pretty, it's pretty easy to find, but it's been just the coolest little wine shop where we've... We've, we've found so many wines yeah. we love from uh -huh. that store. Yeah. yeah. Oh, cool. So how'd you guys land on the name Striking Matches? <laughs> that was mostly um, Justin came up with that. <laughs> He tried, he's like, you, but really, you did come up with it. We well, were kind I was of more just, drinking. Just yeah, like, I know. You tell it. We were really trying to find something that sort of evoked this thing that we do live, which is kind of like high energy and feels like it might come off the rails at any point. <laughs> it's yeah. just like, you know, so I think that's sort of what made you think of it, right? Yeah, uh, we were just, all we, we, when we were first playing out, we weren't a band mm -hmm. at all. And we were just doing it for fun. Yeah, and it we didn't was have like, a name. <laughs> when it came time, people wanted to know what we were called so they could come see us. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, I mean, we need a name. So, yeah. and then, and we, we were kind of just being like, all right, what does it feel like? What does it feel like when we're playing together? And, and we're kind of doing that sort of unspoken thing where it's like, sometimes it leads to something awesome. And then sometimes yeah. we're trying to go somewhere and it just completely blows up. And, <laughs> Um, yeah. it's like it, that's what it felt like. The more we, we kind of tried it on, it yeah. was like, yeah, that's, it kind of became us. Yeah. <laughs> and no one else had it. That's the tough thing about band names. It's like, if you think of something that you're like, nobody's going to have that, somebody always has yeah. it. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the same holds true, like to proprietary names. Yeah. Um, we actually, uh, have a, ooh, segue. Uh, we have a... <laughs> 
Bordeaux blend we call dedication. Mm. And early on, we had a club member who's a trademark attorney and said, that's a great name. You better trademark it. And gosh darn it, over the last 20 years, we've probably had to defend it 10, yeah. 11 times. Wow. Wow. Dang. And we, we've had other wineries using the name. And I think the funniest one was it's a winery where they not only used the name, but almost copied our label down to the font and almost identical crest. Whoa. And they tried to claim, we're sorry, we didn't know. It must be an accident. Whoa. Like, oh, really? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, are you guys ready for uh, to move on to red and try the Cabernet Franc? Yeah, yeah. let's do it. <laughs> so I mentioned dedication. This actually, originally, we were just doing Chardonnay, Cabernet, and a little bit of Merlot. And over the years, we expand, expanded our portfolio. And in the early 2000s, we started doing dedication. And to do that Bordeaux blend, we planted our own Cabernet Franc and our own Malbec so that it could be a state grown. Wow. And so that blend is Cabernet, Merlot, Cab Franc, and Malbec. So in 2009, those new plantings were kind of maturing and coming into their own. And we decided that year that, you know what, let's bottle some of the Franc on its own. We'll only do about 75, 80 cases. And the fun thing of that is that Larger wineries don't know what to do with a 75 or 80 case production. Mm -hmm. But with our strong wine club following, the reason we uh, have that painted red label is that we can actually, we just send this out to our club members and then typically only have 20 or 30 cases left here at the winery to sell to guests here at the winery. And since we can't see guests on the, at the winery right now, we're making them available online. That's amazing. Very yeah, cool. very cool. But this, the entire production of this wine was only nine barrels. Wow. That's incredible. That equates, that equates to be less than 200 cases. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's, um, I don't know that we, oh, okay. Well, I'll let you work I out. cut myself <laughs> on the foil on the wine bottle, like, all the time. All the time. I just did it. That's why, <laughs> that's why I let you open them. Yeah, I tell you. Um, it's dangerous. Um, so, there you go. Made it look easy. Right. Yeah, I don't. I don't think we even realized when we were asking for Cab Franc that you guys only made that much of it. That yeah. really feels even more special now. So. I think Napa was the first place that we had a Cab Franc. We were like, "What is this magical yeah. thing?" It was. <laughs> yeah. It was really. Well, I'm actually. We're gonna do. Um, Thank you. So it, it's fun. A lot of people don't know this, but so all these varietals are clones so they're grown by cuttings of others and very very rarely do you plant from seeds unless you're trying to create a new varietal and it wasn't until the late 90s when genetic test testing became more popular that they started testing all these varietals and they found out that Cabernet Sauvignon is rel a relatively new varietal and the more ancient varietals, Sauvignon Blanc and Cabernet Franc, are the parents of Cabernet Sauvignon. Oh yeah, I, think I heard that actually somewhere. I was, I was trying to figure that out. It's like, was it which one came first? The... <laughs> yeah. So, so it's gonna be fun. Next Friday, we are officially releasing our 2019 Sauvignon Blanc. Mm. So I'm gonna do that with I don't know how to pronounce his name correctly, uh, Delfeo Marcellus. That's a good, good attempt. That's cool. Yeah, if it's not <laughs> yeah. that, you can go with that. The, the trombone, the trombone playing son of I was going to ask Marcellus is uh, any relation. Yeah. There yeah. Go. yeah. I think there's four or five kids and they all play different instruments. Wow. That's neat. I wish we had like, would look at the coloration, but we kind of don't have anything good. I'll use my white shirt. There you go. So well, Cab Franc is typically a little bit lighter in color. Yeah. Mm. And 16 is a brand new release for us. And it's fun because I've actually been enjoying the 14s and the 15s more. And this really harkens back to what our 09 was more like. Uh, Cab Franc typically has a lot of dried herbs, dried cherries, uh, herb de Provence aromas. Mm -hmm. But I'm getting a fun, I've got to tell you a fun story. I'm getting a delightful uh, cocoa powder mm. and ripe, almost candied cherries, note to the nose. 
And I did a uh, wine dinner with a chef in uh, Vail, Colorado, probably seven years ago. Yeah. And the wines taste different at different altitudes. So mm -hmm. what I'm smelling here might be different there in Nashville. Yeah. Um, vapor pressure, humidity, temperature. It's that's a fun thing about wine. It's it's constantly evolving and changing. Yeah. But the chef was smelling this. He said, "I'm getting the cocoa. I'm getting a little vanilla. I'm getting cherries. I would love to do this with a black forest cake, but we have a program to be in the middle of a meal. We need to do a savory dish." Ooh. And he wound up doing a savory black forest cake. He did a he did a vanilla potato foam and then put a braised beef cheek that he had dusted with cocoa powder and then did a cherry glaze on top of it. Wow. Mm. Somebody, so was, nailed that. somebody was showing off. <laughs> Making it for dinner? Yeah. <laughs> Not again, no. Oh, we already, we had that yeah, who's turn us to cook dinner tonight? That's uh, probably uh, whoever we order from. <laughs> <laughs> That's really fun. That's really good. Again, though, like, I, I mean this as a compliment. Um, I find that a lot of our, our experience with Napa wines are like kind of just big Napa cabs and and they get so overwhelmed with the amount of oak and the amount of barrel that you tend to just get. It just seems like it's kind of an overwhelming thing, like between French cabs and, and the Napa ones. That's like kind of one of the big defining difference. It's almost like the Napa cabs we have. It's almost like having birthday cake mm -hmm. where it tends to be big and delicious, but you can only have maybe one slice or something like that, <laughs> as opposed to something you could maybe drink a little longer. And I, I'm noticing with this one, it just, I'm not getting loads and loads and loads mm -hmm. of oak and what I'm tasting more of the fruit, yeah. like, which I feel like the other Napa Cab Francs that we've had. Mm -hmm. Are a little bigger. Yeah, like, we don't uh, tend to get that. that. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. And so, I, yeah. yeah, I mean that as a, as a Yeah, good they're thing. all good things for different reasons, for sure. But that's well, fun. that's part of my approach too. And, you know, maybe it's, um, you know, winemaking, it's a balance. It's science, but it's art and it's passion yeah. and with my musical background I, I, I view winemaking sometimes as I view composing that you can't be all brash Trump voluntary mm -hmm. you need layering you need dynamics mm -hmm. you need to blend and yeah. knowing that the tannins in these mountains can be very aggressive we're barrel aging for three years Wow. So many wineries are have already released their 2017s. We just bottled our 2017s last week. Wow. wow. <laughs> and we're not doing it to make them oakier or toastier, yeah. but to give those wines more time for the tannins to soften, to round out, be more elegant, but also more approachable and food friendly too. Yeah, I'm not I'm not getting loads and loads of tannins like i think yeah. that can make singing really tricky because it tends <laughs> to just like sure, yeah. dry everything up all yeah. in your mouth and so that can make so um it's kind of nice actually just in the current <laughs> that it's, it's not just like <laughs> yeah sure yeah. yeah yeah it's i mean okay. there's these are like very very smooth too mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so we had a question from facebook um mm -hmm. what is your favorite song that you guys have written together hmm Good question. <laughs> yeah, because um, they they all kind of there are reasons. I think yeah. you, there's a funny saying that goes like your your favorite song is the last one you wrote. Um, <laughs> that, you know, that's like kind of the in joke with songwriters. Yeah. But songs they take on so much more meaning and um, context with just how they. Um, affect you what they do mm -hmm. what you do with them and yeah. so i think there have been so many that have kind of taken us on journeys there was mm -hmm. a there was one that was used really prominently on nashville called when the right one comes along that it just i think we've written so many other songs and i don't know if it would be my favorite but it's it's led to some of my favorite moments like it was the first song we ever ever experienced a crowd sing it back to us yeah. which was such a special moment. Any artist will tell you that when mm -hmm. when they experience that, you you sing a song that you made up, and you just 
manifested out of nothing and then people know it and they sing it back to you. Yeah. It's That's, um, it's sort of an indescribable experience. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you haven't, like, I don't know. Well, one, the one, the one I was going to say, uh, we have a song on our night EP called used to you Yeah. that, um, we actually wrote it about four years ago. And, but it was just, it was one of those things where I, Justin, I think went somewhere and I sat down and I wrote these verses, but I couldn't figure out the chorus. And as soon as he came back, I played the verses for him and he immediately had a chorus. It was, it was almost as if he already had it and like had heard me working on it, but he didn't cause he wasn't there. So it was like, <laughs> Where did you come up with that? How did you know it was it would have fit so perfectly? Like it was just really cool, but the song was almost like too close to us that we just didn't feel comfortable releasing it mm -hmm. until this, you know, this EP finally felt like the right time. So I think that whole experience with the way it was written, but how you know songs can have a lot of power too, and so you wanna you know if you wanna say something in the song, you gotta put it out when it makes the most sense for you, I guess. And mm -hmm. so that would be one one recent favorite, I guess. <laughs> yeah. All those, all that to say is, is hard. It's hard to pick. It is hard. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll paraphrase the, I'll paraphrase the question then. You're warming up, you're getting ready to go on stage and you're just relaxed. You're in the zone. Where do you find your muscle memory takes you and you're subconsciously before you know what you're playing a song? um mine's retrograde <laughs> yeah yeah that's that's one of our songs um off of a uh, an ep we released um a year and a half ago mm -hmm. or so and it's a song called retrograde which is just like a we often start our sets with it yeah. so it starts out with this big kind of slide intro thing and mm -hmm. so it just kind of like gets me going and it, i think gets the crowd going and so yeah. i think that's where i just sort of go <laughs> yeah yeah mine it's always just like so noodly like that we that's just like kind of getting your fingers you have an instrumental and, that you wrote that you yeah <laughs> yeah anything to kind of just like just kind of stay limber and yeah <laughs> uh, because of the, the way we play you yeah. just gotta shake the nerves off a lot of the time <laughs> which usually never works until you play your first song yeah for sure um, yeah it's always the case you come out and you you do the first song and that's like when you're settling mm -hmm. in and by the second song or third song, then you yeah. like you start hitting cruising al altitude, and, and you're good. Cruising altitude. <laughs> altitude, yeah, that's what we're. Yeah, doing. it's okay. it's funny because a band I play in a lot, I'll be warming up, and I usually warm up with whole tones. Mm -hmm. Then I do a tonguing exercise, and I'm ready to go, but nobody else is ready, so I want to go back to whole tones. So I usually go to a ballad, and I had somebody once after a few rehearsals go. Andy, you really like the jazz standard Misty, don't you? I'm like, oh, it's so good. <laughs> no, it's just, it's just a good whole tones exercise, and I was never really aware that's what I was doing. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. There is something kind of automatic that, I that you're even aware of what you do is really funny. But yeah, some some of ours, I'm sure, is so kind of subconscious that we're we don't yeah. even realize we're doing it. <laughs> well, good. So night brand new out in the yeah. last month. Yeah. And available, I'm sure, on Spotify or your website or Amazon. All places, yeah. Yep. Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, strikingmatches.com. Yeah, yep. all of it. Yeah, you can get uh, physical copies. We we released a physical version of it. Mm -hmm. um, and just because we could, we released the little like in instrumental interlude that is only included on the, the physical mm -hmm. copy. Yeah. Just as like a cool way that we just, Anything. we still love <laughs> yeah. having a physical record yeah. that you can actually sure. have and play. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great. Well, and for everybody else out there watching again, if you're interested in trying our wines, uh, $10 flat rate shipping anywhere in the continental United States, except Utah, I'm afraid, uh, on, six on six bottles or more with the <laughs> promo code MATCHES. And that's yeah. SchweigerVineyards.com. Yeah. Bummer, Utah, but oh well, everywhere else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, fantastic. Do you guys mind closing out with one more song? No, not, not at all. all. Let's do life. it. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's a pleasure spending time and talking with you guys. And Likewise. Thanks for having us. We can travel. I look forward to hosting you guys here and just hanging out and enjoying a glass of wine together. Yeah, we would love that. We'll we are, on it. We are really missing it, man. Um, we love coming out there. I feel like it's, it's the only place in the world that I've actually managed to relax, like genuinely relax. 
<laughs> well, great. While well, you guys finish tuning, to everybody watching from home, thank you for tuning in today. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Uh, next week, Friday 22nd, we will be joined by Dorfeo Marcellus. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing it. And just out of yesterday on the 29th, we're going to have Brian Newman, who has a residency at the, um, oh, I forgot the name, but uh, he has a residency in Las Vegas, and it's kind of a fun variety burlesque show, uh, made in fun trumpet play. So, uh, the Nomad, the Nomad Resort and Casino. That's really cool. Well, thank you everybody for joining us today. Sarah and Justin, what are you going to play? We, um... I'm going to play you a song from our variety burlesque show that we have. Um... That's right. <laughs> we, uh, when, uh, when Justin and I first met in that guitar class and they threw us up there in front of all the kids to make something up, he asked me if I knew any blues. And I said, well, yeah, I know a ton of blues. So, uh... Started playing some blues. It went really well. So we're gonna just play some blues for you guys. I think, yeah? Cool. Well, yeah, yeah, we should now. <laughs> oh, we better. <laughs>